Hi everyone, it's Latasia Cofield, NAMIC New York chapter member, and I'm here at IAC Applications, an app development firm that have heavily invested in creating mobile applications that make consumer lives easier. Hi everyone, this is Latasia Cofield, NAMIC New York chapter member, and I'm here at IAC Applications, an app development firm that have heavily invested in creating mobile applications that make consumers' lives easier. I'm super excited. I have a special guest here. I'm here with Netta Jenkins. She is the head of diversity and inclusion at IAC, and we'll be speaking on how to achieve active allyship in the workplace. So let's just jump right into it. Thank yeah. you so much for volunteering your time Absolutely. and divulging your expertise. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we all know, the demographic profile in the United States is shifting mm -hmm. with minorities expected to reach the majority by 2044. Right. Therefore, companies have been leveraging their workforce and been beefing up their employee resource groups to reach diverse communities and uh, mm -hmm. customers. There has been a long debate on the effectiveness of employee resource groups. Right. In your experience, are they effective? It's an excellent question. <laughs> um, so ERGs are effective in the workplace to a point, right? I think they do uh, provide a sense of community. Um, but ERGs... For me, what I found uh, very quickly was that they were essentially segregated groups. Mm -hmm. So if you have a people of color group, if you have a women in tech group, an LGBTQ group, you now have three separate groups, right? But what happens to those folks that don't identify with those groups? They don't join. They're not a part of it. And if you're not a part of something, then you're not investing your time. And particularly, we're you know, having a, a very big challenge, and I think all tech companies with white men, mm -hmm. right, or executives in general being invested. Um, and so my task has always been, well, how do we bring everyone to the table, mm -hmm. right? I love the fact that you, you could have that community where you could vent and you could, you know, try to create change within that ERG, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how do we create change overall in the workplace? How do we bridge that gap? That's pretty fascinating. That's right. an, a dynamic perspective to have. Mm -hmm. When you think of diversity, the first thing that comes to mind are minorities right. and women. Mm -hmm. And specifically to tech companies, they're focused now on neurodiversity. Mm -hmm. When you think of neurodivergent, those with autism, mm -hmm. that have bipolar disorder and ADHD, how do those companies accommodate those subgroups. I mean, they're heavily right. uh, an asset to the company because they tend to have unique skills in mathematic, mathematics and science, mm -hmm. but how are you making, ensuring full inclusion? Right. What are you, some of your tactics? So what I did was, you know, initially we had employee resource groups. Mm -hmm. We removed them. We removed all groups and created one group called Diversity Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And with Diversity Ambassadors, you have every single person that um, is really adding to the discussion, right? So if you're someone that is really passionate about women in technology, mm -hmm. you may be talking about women in tech. Now you're sharing content and other people are learning. Mm -hmm. Every single person is a part of this group. Um, and what we also do is we've created a Slack channel um, called Diversity Ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So we're having ongoing conversations literally every single day. It's not just one day and, oh, we're gonna talk about this. People are talking about being a single mother, being oh. a single father. Um, so it gets real. It gets yeah. very, very real. When <laughs> Black real. Panther came out, mm -hmm. there was um, an employee that said, well, I don't understand the big hype mm -hmm. around Black Panther. You know, there was um, another employee that says, well, let me break it down for you. This was not an African-American employee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this was um, a Caucasian employee that said, well, let me tell you why it's so important. Wow. And that's the type of change that we want to see, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and that's why it goes back to 
yes, employee resource group creates that sense of community, but how are we creating change and how are we getting everyone talking about these topics and invested about um, in, in these topics as well? So it doesn't seem like you got rid of the group, the employee resource groups, mm-hmm. you've expanded it to make it more inclusive. Well, no, we removed, we removed, removed all those. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so we removed completely... all those groups and we only okay. created one group called Diversity Ambassadors. So that's literally every single person in the company that's a part of these conversations contributing yeah. you know, to this as well. And the other thing is we have employees that are in Minsk, you know, mm. that are in um, Austria, that are around the world. global. It's, yeah, it's global. global. So, you know, a lot of the things that we're dealing with as Americans, they may not be dealing with. And it's so key for them to Mm -hmm. understand some Mm -hmm. of these things Mm -hmm. um, that are coming up, you know, in the Mm -hmm. workplace in America as well. And they're applying, you know, um, to the discussion as well. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, How do you create a safe space for people to speak on topics and discuss sometimes uncomfortable Mm -hmm. issues um, that with one another that may not share the same characteristics Mm -hmm. or the lifestyles as each other. Right. Yeah. Well, I think a part of that, it goes right back to our diversity ambassadors group. That, that is really a safe space. So one of the things that I'm coming up with now that I'm creating is called holistic mindset, Mm -hmm. right? And having a holistic mindset means you have the willingness to risk comfortable standards, right? And Mm -hmm. a lot of the times we want to be comfortable, right? And we we say, quote unquote, oh, we we want this safe space. natural. Yeah, Yeah, which is is a natural thing. But in order for us to create change, we have to talk about these things openly, Openly, you know? Um, And so that Diversity Ambassadors channel is about respecting every single person's mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. Even that guy that said, listen, I don't understand the hype around Black Panther. I, I'm so happy that he brought that mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. because that gave someone else a chance to say, well, this is the importance of it. Mm-hmm. And after that, it was such an enlightening thing. And I think people felt safe. He wasn't um, attacked, yeah. you know, um, but he was educated yeah. on the importance sure. of it. So. Sure, sure. That's pretty incredible how you use technology to communicate Absolutely. with one another. Absolutely. So that's an important yes. factor to mm-hmm. ensuring this operate perfectly. Yeah. So the moment of truth while mm-hmm. we're all here, what does it really mean to achieve active allyship mm-hmm. in the workplace? And how do you know what which allyship programs your mm-hmm. company are in need of. Right. I think the biggest thing is, an ally means being an advocate, yeah. being a sponsor, right? A lot of companies say, we have a pipeline issue in the tech world. We have a pipeline issue, Netta. It's not a pipeline issue, it's an opportunity mm-hmm. issue. Are we willing to give people an opportunity to excel? Are we willing to train them? So that means someone that may have been at a uh, a tech boot camp mm-hmm. coming out of a tech boot camp that doesn't have much experience mm-hmm. or maybe they've trained themselves how to code are we going to give them the opportunity to to learn to bring them on board right. are we just sticking to the job description and saying hey this is what it is um, and for us we created a program called the career switch program okay so that is for folks that um, you know, joined a tech boot camp mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. they're teaching themselves how to code. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're partnering those people with hiring managers that have hiring power. Mm-hmm. So those are their allies and they're becoming advocates and sponsors. So I have one person actually that we're extending an offer to that mm-hmm. is in that program. Um, she is phenomenal. And, you know, she went to a tech boot camp. She mm-hmm. doesn't have a computer science degree. And a lot of the talk was, hey, Netta, I don't know if, you know, she would be the best fit right Mm -hmm, now because mm -hmm. she doesn't have all the tools and um, all the things that we require. And I had to have that conversation with them that we can train her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We need to give her the opportunity to excel. Let's set some expectations so she knows what to expect and you know mm-hmm, what you mm-hmm, want out mm-hmm. of it as well. But I said, if we train her, she could be a valuable asset right. to this company. And that is what an advocate is about. I mean, the person that was mentoring her um, is the vice president of, of software engineering. 
he is so dedicated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said to me, Ned, I don't care what it is. I'm going to do whatever I can do mm -hmm. to bring her on board because I believe in her. You know, that's a pretty fascinating uh, concept and insight that you have mm -hmm. on that because if you are making that career shift, mm -hmm. many times, you know, you send your application out mm -hmm. and the HR manager is the gatekeeper right. and they're looking to ensure that you have this timeline worth a work experience. Right, right. And you may not have acquired that because mm -hmm. you you shift careers. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty interesting uh, concept that you need to have the hiring manager advocating for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think also any diversity and inclusion leader, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's not enough just to say, oh, well, we need talent. Mm -hmm. You also have to be an advocate too because yeah. I was an advocate throughout that process saying, mm -hmm. listen, I believe in her. I know that she's capable of excelling in right. this role, you know. Okay. Um, and because I had that conversation with them, they were excited about it too. You know, the hiring manager said to yeah. me, I'm getting chills. And he said to me, Nettie, you're right. If it weren't for someone giving me a chance mm -hmm. and an opportunity, I would never be at the place that I'm at today. Someone has to give exactly. you a chance. It starts with someone exactly. giving you giving you the torch to... Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So how have your current company, mm -hmm. IAC, mm -hmm. um, created a sustainable work environment for mm -hmm. you to lead change in this capacity? Yeah, IAC Applications has, you know, really allowed me to be innovative mm -hmm. and creative, and that's what it's about. So um, when I browse through job descriptions for head of diversity and inclusion or VP of diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. I see a list of things that they want. Yeah. And I'm like, how can they possibly put all these things yes. on this job description when no one has really been able to mm. excel at diversity and inclusion. Like, wouldn't I want to see a company that's gonna put out a blank form mm -hmm. that says VP of diversity and inclusion or head of diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion with no responsibilities mm -hmm. and ask that person, hey, come in and pitch your idea. We want to see how innovative and creative, because that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about that person's mindset. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily what the company thinks. And I think many companies are going that route right yeah. now. You know, And so at IEC Applications, they've allowed me to be creative. They've allowed me to um, really take my experiences and implement it, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and allowed me to have a voice mm -hmm. on these topics, allowed me to you know, go out externally and mm -hmm. uh, speak to people and empower people around these topics. Sure. So, um, you know, that that's a, a true blessing. I think that's so important to have mm -hmm. that type of support system and work Absolutely. environment, especially in a creative industry such as tech. Mm -hmm. um, this is why we have so many amazing apps out there that make our lives easier. Yes. I love apps. I do everything <laughs> with apps. I do too. I call a car on demand car service. Mm -hmm. I do book a parking spot right. on demand, a cleaning service. You can everything. even find you a husband. You know, oh my gosh. Yes. yes, yes, absolutely. So, uh, considering that the average mobile user spends about 170 second mm -hmm. minutes on their um, mobile. Mm -hmm. Uh, checks it 150 times per day <laughs> and <laughs> with the average wet mobile session lasting 70 seconds what is the future of app development gosh the future of app development yes. is looking bright yeah. <laughs> so at IEC applications um, we have four different businesses, yes. right? So we have a browser division, mm -hmm. we have two mobile businesses, and yep. then a desktop and utilities business. And we're really focused on app development right yeah. now with the two you know, mobile businesses, Apollon and Daily Burn. And um, we just see it expanding. People want something that's easy. Mm -hmm. um, they want it quick yeah. and effective and efficient. And Instant app gratification. Yeah, instant yes. gratification, right? <laughs> and so yeah. I feel like um, applications allow you to do that. Yeah. Press click of a button and boop, here's boop, your car. Yeah, yes, right. <laughs> click of a button and boop, there's your man. Well, maybe, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Hopefully. That's a little that's harder what, to do, right? That is. We'll it takes a lot of trial and error we'll there. there. That's but. right. <laughs> a personalized man, you can customize them. 
Oh. oh. See? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what opportunities does the industry have for the next generation of tech gurus, mm-hmm. engineers, developers, designers? Yeah, I think, you know, for IAC applications, it's really about finding people mm-hmm. that are innovative, that are creative, right. um, allowing them to just allowing them the opportunity. You yeah. know, like when I, I had talked to you about uh, the, the young lady that we're going to be bringing on board. Um, it's those opportunities mm. that really empower us as an organization. Mm. You know, giving someone a chance, giving someone a chance, training them, getting them up to speed, and watching them excel, watching them reach a CEO level or a VP level or a senior mm. manager level. Like, we want to see that, and I, I think that's the future for us. Really developing people, leadership, mm. and and development is people key. development. Yes. Love that. But mm-hmm. so what tips can you provide people looking to make this career shift? Mm-hmm. I know you spoke on it a little spoke a little bit about the boot camp. Right. Um, but people who may not have don't want to invest in mm-hmm. you know, don't have the money or the time to invest right. in a computer science or an or engineering degree. Mm-hmm. Do you can you speak a little bit further? Maybe this Yeah, yeah. Early, there's there's a lot of great organizations okay. out there that are free. A lot of applications, too, okay. um, that are free, that mm-hmm. they can teach themselves how to code. Um, we Build Black is an organization that I absolutely love. Okay. I always tell people to go there, go there. They teach you how to code for free. Wow. You know, and there's a lot of tech companies now. They're code not, for free? Code for free. Code for free. They're amazing. 2018. There's yeah. no excuses. No, there's no. just no excuses. There's no excuses. Yeah, and then there's so many different programs out mm-hmm. there, too, that you can download. And really, if that's something you want to do, teach yourself. Teach yourself. And sometimes, you know what? You have to invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. spend a little bit of money mm-hmm. um, to gain that knowledge, do it. Do It'll it. pay off in the end. I do know Google has a tool mm-hmm. that... It's a free tool mm-hmm. that teaches you how to develop an app. It's See, completely free, and it's it's a mock app, but mm-hmm. it still teaches you the um, procedure. Right, right, right. So what are some of your favorite apps? Yeah, so Daily Burn, mm-hmm. um, one of our businesses, just came out with an app called Hit, mm-hmm. which is awesome for those that like working out and really about... Just creating a healthy life okay. style. Which um, we're all interested in. We're all interested in. People are living longer. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. So that's yeah. a great, great app they just mm-hmm. came out with. It's, um, I think a lot of people like mm-hmm. are invested in that right now. Um, another one is We Video app. Okay. For me, um, you know, I have a husband and my son as well, and oh, I just you're busy. Yes, you're a and modern I, woman <laughs> doing it all. Yeah, <laughs> and I absolutely adore them, mm-hmm. and um, both of them are super funny. So just yesterday, my husband and I are supposed to be attending an event from Michael Kors. Oh, for Halloween, fabulous. yeah, Halloween. and um, we're trying to figure out what we're going to be for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And he put on his '70s outfit, and he was doing his dance moves. So I'm praying for his <laughs> his big toe and the platform <laughs> shoe, but. Instantly, when he when we uh, when I had filmed him, I said, "Oh my gosh, I could use Wii Video yeah. and create the clip of him like doing this thrust move over and over." And that's oh, what so I did. Cute. So it was amazing. But I love using Wii Video. Okay. That's one of my favorite apps. Um, any financial apps mm. I'll use because it's easy. You know, I bank with Bank of America, so I can just mm-hmm. click on that mm-hmm. and take a look at hey, making sure no yeah, one I do the same. Thing <laughs> no with one's my, going through yes. my account. Mm-hmm. Um, or nothing bound. So yes, right. Checking. <laughs> no check and balance. You, you, you never to, know. You right? never know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, mm. I mean, just all apps in general, I mm. think, are really, really awesome because it's just you know the quickness of it and the effective mm-hmm. the effectiveness of it as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what's going on with you, Miss Netta? Yes. You have this new show called mm-hmm. Life in 3D. Yes. It speaks to three generations mm-hmm. of women mm-hmm. coming together to speak about their unique experiences. Right, right. Can you speak a little bit of, uh, further on that and how did that come into fruition? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That, gosh, that show yeah. is such a blessing. Okay. Um, I was speaking at Etsy, and um, after the talk, mm-hmm. Crystal Berger, who is a Fox News producer mm-hmm. and reporter, um, came up to me and she's just like, hey, you did a great job, yeah. but you know, let's do lunch one day and just chat. 
we did lunch and she started talking about an idea for a show that she had. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is amazing, yeah. right? Um, at the time, we there was no name, but she's just like, you know, a show that's really going to be influential, inspiring, empowering, a show that's going to be about breakthrough for all people, you know, no matter what stage you're in in your life, because there's always something that someone is struggling with, mm -hmm. um, whether it be relationship or mm -hmm. career or say you want to have a child and it's tough for you, you know, that's my situation. Mm -hmm. um, or people dealing with, you know, being like molested or, mm -hmm. I mean, like there's just so many different things different that people go real through. World, yeah. Real world issues. And sometimes yeah. people go to sleep crying about them. It doesn't matter. Your life may look perfect, but mm -hmm. there's something that you want to get past. Um, and so this show, Life in 3D, is all about it. Um, Crystal said, hey, listen, Netta, I have someone I want you to meet, mm -hmm. Carla Moore. HBO, I want, yeah, yeah she is a force. <laughs> she yes. is a force, vice yes. president, um, sales strategy at HBO. Yes. And I met with her at her office, and I'm like, immediately, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. I could see these two women not just being co-hosts, but like lifelong friends yes. and sisters. And mm -hmm. we literally are now. Um, and we all clicked and connected. And we all had different stories, mm -hmm. you know, very different backgrounds. Like I grew up in the suburbs and Carla grew up in the South and Crystal mm -hmm. grew up in the city. Um, yeah, yeah, quite completely it's different. Completely different. Yes. You know, I'm dealing with infertility. Um Carla's dealing with, you know, she dealt with obesity. Um, and then Crystal dealt with, you know, molestation. Mm. And, and, you know, so very, very dramatic experiences. And then we're, all three of us are from different industries. So wow. I'm in the te technology sector. And, you know, Carla's in entertainment. And Crystal's in news. And it's really this business lifestyle mm. um, show that, is for people that are looking for that breakthrough. And we want people to watch and, you know, leave that show feeling empowered. Yeah. They, they have something to take away and implement in into their lives. And we want to be vulnerable and open and let them know that, listen, we're real women and these things go on, yeah. you know. Sure. But we have to keep it moving and we're going to really help everyone through those through wow. those times. I definitely think that your viewers will be able to yeah. take so much. Thank you. Enriching information from that. Thank you so and much. And for you guys for to be so vulnerable yeah. to, I think that's pretty powerful. Thank you so much. So where can viewers watch Life in 3D? Yes. Yeah. So right now, um, you know, they're they're in the it's in the editing stages. It's in the editing stages. Okay. But we're hoping a Netflix picks it up, sure. or who knows, maybe an HBO will pick it up. Okay. Um, Forbes, you know, but it'll definitely be on um, a digital platform. Okay. It just has to be shopped around, and yeah. um, we'll see where it ends up. But folks can definitely go on our website, www.lifein3d.com, okay. to right. you know, check out some behind the scenes and some clips. Okay, we'll keep monitoring that. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again for taking the time out your schedule no to problem. sit here and speak with the NAMIC organization. Yeah. We greatly, greatly appreciate your ex expertise Thank and you. your tips on how to achieve active allyship in the workplace. Thank you so much. NAMIC is such an awesome organization, so I'm thankful to be a part of this. Thank you, guys.